All right, guys. Good morning. My name is Mark Schrader. I'm a project engineer, project and support engineer here at Adroid Technologies. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you guys specifically about CC Link. Um, some theory around it, not a hell of a lot. And um, I'm going to be showing you guys a quick um, presentation on how to set it up. A practical presentation that is. And um, yeah, we'll take it from there. All right. So let's have a look quickly. I'm going to tell you quickly um, my introduction, CC Link overview, basically what it's about, a uh, quick scenario, um, the setup. I'll speak about the wiring. I'm not going to really show you guys the wiring. Um, VSD setup, PLC software setup, and then I'm going to show you a video with the setup of it. Okay. So, quick introduction. So, why are we doing this webinar? Um, we're going to basically showcase the CC Link serial link theory as well as a practical setup thereof using the Q series PLC. So to do this we're going to use the GXWorks 2 to set up the communication and it's a heck of a lot easier than what people think it is. Okay, so it's relatively quick and easy. Alright. Okay, let's get going. So what is CC Link? CC Link is a 10 megabit network transmission. It's based on RS-485 with networks up to 1.2 kilometers or you can extend it up to 13 kilometers with repeaters. You can have 64 stations per network. All right. The refresh time is less than 3.9 milliseconds for 65 IO stations, distance dependent, which is relatively fast. And the master slave network with floating masters and hot swap at stations. Okay. So this will be your typical configuration of CC Link. Um, up top, you the upper network, that um, CC Link computer for CC Link, that will basically be a PC that you can use to set up CC Link. Okay, so, and then at the, um, just below it, the master station can be any controller. It can actually even be your personal computer or a PLC. And that will then communicate down to your CC Link network. Now the wonderful thing about CC Link is that it can actually communicate with quite a lot of um, devices like an HMI, solenoid, sensors, sensor transformers, indicators, temperature controllers, transmission equipment, barcode readers, um, gateways, server drives, robots, interface to a personal computer, remote I.O. and repeater. I'm specifically going to look today at um, how to set up the remote I.O. for you as I that is what I actually have to set, set it up with. Okay, so CC Link versions, you get three versions at the moment. So your version one is the original version of, original release of CC Link, which has been around for quite a few years now. 1.1, this allows more convenient interstation cables of length of 20 centimeters and more. So in other words, your, your cables need to be longer than 20 centimeters. Okay, so if you've got a, con a, a little network and you have two stations next to each other, you need to have a, mac a minimum um, cable length of 20 centimeters. This specification change affects network devices and network cables. Okay. Two was this version um, provided an eightfold increase in the volume of data communications in systems and per station. So in other words, you can communicate with quite a lot more um, stations and um, I.O. out in the field. So let's look at the cable version. Version 1.1 is indicated on the cable jacket for version 1. Compatible cable and instructions to use. Cable 1.1 is recommended for use with version 1 and for version 2 products. Okay. Um, if the entire system consists of version 1 or version 2 products and uses the cable length the cable, sorry, version 1.1, then the required length of each station must be at least 20 centimeters or more. This is something that I spoke about a little earlier. The different brand cables can also be used within a single system. Okay. Um, one of the reasons why they recommend using the, the cables, by the way, um, just so that you know, is um, for it's got a shield, it's a shielded cable, and um, this shielded cable, obviously, if you understand um, um, RS 485 and electric elec electricity and what have you, um, each cable um, electricity cable so um, emits uh, a, a signal, and it's a bit of electromagnetic signal, and this electromagnetic signal can interfere with communications on RS 485, Ethernet, 
you name it and that's why you need a proper shielded cable and this cable needs to be grounded as well okay so network compatibility a version 2 master station is compatible with both version 2 slave station and previous version stations so version 1 and version 1.1 okay so but these slave stations can only be used within the specific of that version. So in other words, version 1 can only be used with version 1 and version 1.1 can only be used with version 1.1. Okay, they cannot provide added data volume. Alright, as you can see the picture at the bottom, it basically tells you the same story. So let's look quickly at our scenario and um, what we set up over here. We've got a Q-series PLC and um, it's going to connect via CC link to those three remote IOs. I'm not going to bore you with the details of of the long names on there, but just know that the 16DR that is a, an output mod model, the 64AD it's an output digital output model. Sorry, the 64AD is a four four. Um, is a, is a four analog um, input model okay analog input and a d62 that is your an analog output model okay so before we set anything up sorry wrong picture so what we're going to do is um, we set up the q series plc so we have a quick look at how we can do that um, first step one obviously is to open up a new project and start a new project open up gxworks 2 and start a new project okay so you go project new and then you're going to select the actual PLC. Now this is the PLC that I used for this example. So if you have a Q02, Q05, Q18 or what on earth ever, you can use that for, for that application. But because I have a Q03 UDE, I use that PLC. And the language, I normally like using the structured ladder slash FDB. Okay. So then you go to the navigation windows, parameter, PLC parameter, because you have to always, before you do anything on a PLC, you have to set up the parameters first. Okay. I always, always do that, and I always recommend that people do that as well. So once you open up the, the parameters, you'll get that page saying Q parameter settings, and um, you're going to click on IO assignment, and it will open up your IO assignment. Now your IO assignment, if you, understand, if you don't know PLCs, is where you're basically going to tell the PLC um, which cards are in which slots of the of the rack. Okay. So what I did is I was a little bit lazy. I clicked on the read PLC button, and what it does is it reads all the cards that are in on the PLC. So as you can see there, there's an intelligent card input, output, and some more intelligent cards. Okay. Now our card that we are looking at is in slot number six. Uh, slot number five, sorry, and um, in slot number six, yes, sorry, it's in slot number six, and it's uh, intelligent card thirty-two IO points, and its start XY address is zero sixty. Okay, so you say check number one, and then once you found that there are no errors, then you say end, and it will close the page for you. So next step, which is the most important step, obviously, is your, you go to navigation window again, you click on parameters, you open up your network parameter, and then you click on CC link, you double click on CC link, and it will open the next page for you. Okay, so this is the basic configuration, this is basically how you would set it up. As you can see over there, 060, if you remember a few slides ago, we said that this is the beginning of the XY that we're going to use, so it's 060. Operating settings, um, if you click on that, you can basically give your network a name. Um, I normally just call it CC Link Network. Um, type of, uh, type is master. You get various, um, you get various types under there. You'll get a slave station as well, uh, because you can set this up as a slave. Remote network is in your mode, so I've chosen version one mode for this because uh, the, the devices out in the field are only version 1 and then remote input output registers and inputs um, B1, B100, W0, W100 those are the the, the addresses that we're going to be um, talking to but the one that I'm specifically in, um, interested in is this one over here that says CC link configuration setting now what you're going to do is you're going to select that and you are going to go 
to this page over here okay as you can see on the right hand side over here um, there is something called find module so you can directly type in the device that you want to talk to um, the one that's out in the field so as you can see the, these are the devices that are out in the field you just take it and you drag and drop it into there okay so every time you want to add a device you just click on it and you drag and drop it into there I'll show you guys later in the example so once you've done that you say close with reflecting the setting and it will save that for you now the next stage very easy stage now we actually want to download the program but we want to compile it first so you go from compile to rebuild all it will build this program for you it will check for any errors syntax errors um, etc okay and once you have once that's fine then you can download the program as well okay so the next step I wanted to look at is just basically showing you a video scene of how I did this um, this was a very very rough video scene that I did and this is what I did so I got it in place As you can see there's no program in the PLC that's why it's flashing an error light that there is my CC link card alright and there's my my analog uh, my devices out in the field okay and one of the things you need to have a look at on those was the SD and the RD card once the SD and the RD card, um, SD and RD on the cards will be blank. Once those come on and they stay solid, then you know you have communications. So project, new project. Wait for it to open, it takes a second or two. And once it's there, you go to parameter and always PLC parameter is the first thing you do you go and you set your IO assignments I just said read, it reads directly from the PLC and there everything is in there and I say end so next thing we want to do is we want to set up the network parameter because this is we, this is the heart and soul of actually what we want to do and we go to CC link over there I'm going to select one board because I've only got one board in there set the station information 060 I gave it a name CC link and okay and then I went down there where you see the little red block it says CC link configuration settings so as you as uh, you go into there you're going to go to find module it's easiest way to actually add the module so I type in the the module name it's a bit of a long name so I'm not going to bore you with whatever the name is this is just for this example and once it's found it uh, all I do is I drag and drop it into there as you can see it takes up one station number and then I type in the next one Oh dear, I think I put in the wrong module number over there, so it is quite specific in what it's looking for. So let me try again. Oh no, same same story. Let's see what have I done wrong here. Uh, it's the 64 if I remember right. And then there you go, there's my module. And that takes up two station numbers. And then the last card that I added with the D62 that is your analog output card and I dragged and dropped it into there so that's all done all good I made it 10 meg because I want it to be as fast as possible and then I say close with reflecting the setting in other words it basically saves it for you at the end of the day I say check no error which is always good and of course you say end takes a few seconds just to update and then what I did is I compile, I rebuild the whole program 
say yes and it will basically compile the program for you no errors found just a little warning because the program was empty and now I want to write it to the PLC write parameters and program and can execute alright now that is done now if you look at the PLC I need to put it into run mode and there we go no errors so it's in run mode now so you can see the SD and the RD card on the on the slaves uh, slaves are on and that's how you know for sure that you have um, communications to those devices and that's that for that video I want to thank you all for listening to me if you guys have any any questions please ask me I'm not scared to answer any your questions if something is unclear for you please let me know anybody out there have any questions I know this was a very short webinar the the subject matter isn't very difficult to understand it's not very difficult to actually do um, I, I remember doing this for the first time that I found it relatively easy to do So guys, any questions? Let me go back to this page. Uh, let's see. Thank you, John. Thank you, Steve, for joining us. Anybody else out there? Anybody have questions? Alright, so if you don't have questions, I think I'll be signing off. And I want to thank you guys for joining me. And um, I hope you guys have a good day. Have a lekker one. Cheers. Sorry, and just one last thing, just before you guys go, <laughs> I forgot to tell you this. Please, please, please subscribe to us. Click on the bell icon for any updates that you might, might have from us. Um, if you have any questions, f um, please email me if, if you are unclear or uncertain about stuff. Um, I will get back to you as soon as possible. And then another thing, um, I'm doing another webinar next Thursday at 11 o'clock I think next Tuesday we have another webinar as well which I'm not going to be doing but one of my colleagues will be doing it so please join us next week Tuesday and next week Thursday and uh, yeah we hope to see you guys there cheers